Tonight, President Biden says there is no doubt in his mind who's responsible for the death of Vladimir Putin's fiercest critic, Alexei Navalny. That is, Putin himself. Navalny was an anti-corruption activist who was being held in a penal colony after being arrested in 2021 when he returned to Russia in an incredibly symbolic act of defiance, knowing that very arrest was likely coming. Navalny had just survived and barely recovered from an assassination attempt after Russian agents poisoned his underwear with a nerve agent. Russian prison officials claim tonight that Navalny suddenly lost consciousness while at that Siberian penal colony. And joining me now is Republican presidential candidate, former U.S. ambassador to the United Nations and former South Carolina governor, Nikki Haley. Governor Haley, it's great to have you here tonight. First, on the major international today, news today, do you believe that President Putin is directly responsible for Alexei Navalny's death? Absolutely. I mean, all you have to do is look at his track record. I mean, this is a man who's known to kill his political opponents. We saw him do this with the Skripals in the United Kingdom a few years back when I was at the United Nations. And honestly, Caitlin, that's what was so disturbing about what Donald Trump said in his rally in Conway, South Carolina a week ago, um, was that he said that he would side with Putin and not defend NATO allies if they weren't pulling their weight. But he went even further than that. And he said that he would encourage Putin to invade any countries not pulling their weight. That means Donald Trump is siding with a thug who kills his political opponents. He's siding with someone who has made no bones about wanting to destroy America. He's siding with someone who arrests American journalists and holds them hostage. And he's siding with a dictator instead of siding with our allies who stood with us at 9-11. It's the problem. But this is exactly the Russia I know. I dealt with them every day at the United Nations. It is a brutal dictatorship. Nolvaney was a hero. He was trying to call out the corruption. He was trying to call out what Putin did. The fact that he returned back to Russia was nothing short of just amazingly courageous. But he was trying to to make a point. And what Putin was doing was trying to make a point in front of the next Russian elections to everybody not to speak up against him. It's a you, sad day. You bring up former President Trump. I mean, he has been silent since we learned of Navalny's uh, apparent death. Why do you think he's been completely quiet on this? You know, it's not up for me to decide why he's being quiet. The problem is anybody that can't call out a dictator that's a problem. You know, he should be calling, not just calling Putin out for what happened to Novaney, he should be calling Putin out for the fact that he's got Evan Gersovich as a hostage. He should be calling Putin out for invading Ukraine. He should be calling Putin out for the fact that now they are surrounding the Baltics and Putin's getting ready for his next act. When he said that that day, it emboldened Putin. And what we're seeing is Putin's emboldened by Biden, because he senses weakness. He doesn't see any sort of resistance, and that's why he invaded Ukraine. And he's emboldened by Trump, because Trump is not willing to stand up for our allies. Both of those are dangerous. And I can promise you this, Putin would not be doing that if I were president. We know how the Russians are. We know that they cause chaos. We know that they cause distractions. But we never lose sight of how Putin thinks and what his end goal is. And that's the fact that he wants to go after our allies and he wants to make sure he destroys America. If you were president today, how would you hold Putin accountable for Navalny's death? One, you just call it out and you remind all of your allies that you do it. But the best way to hold Putin accountable is to make sure that Ukraine wins. I don't think we need to give cash to friend or enemy. I think you always should just make sure that we give equipment and ammunition so that we can hold it accountable. But we should be standing beside Ukraine as they do this. And the reason is, I saw at the United Nations, dictators, thugs, and terrorists always tell us what they're gonna do. They're very transparent. We just have to know to listen. Hamas said they were gonna invade Israel, and they did. China said they were gonna take Hong Kong. It happened during COVID. Russia said they were gonna invade Ukraine. We watched it. China says Taiwan is next. We better believe them. Russia said once they take Ukraine, Poland and the Baltics are next. Those are NATO countries and that immediately puts America at war. We are trying to prevent war. This has always been about preventing war.